Hello, Kazik Radowanski. Please describe your film, Anne at 13,000 Feet, to my audience. Uh, Anne at 13,000 Feet uh, is a film featuring an incredible performance by Derek Campbell. Uh, it's a portrait of a woman on the verge of something. We don't know what, but we follow her uh, very closely as she tries to navigate uh, her life. Um, and one of the things she gravitates to towards is skydiving. Mm. Uh, hence the title, Anna 13,000 Feet. She, uh, we see her jump out of a plane. <laughs> this is true. That is a shot in the movie. So yeah. how, how long has this movie been in your head? A long time. Yeah, it's a very personal film. And, um, and again, Dara, Dara's a good friend of mine. And uh, I always wanted to work with her. Uh, she moved uh, to Toronto from New York, I think in 2015. So we've been talking about it since then. Um, and the ideas have been percolating. And then I showed her a script a few years later. But yeah, it's been, it's been a, a labor of love. It's, it's been a, a long collaboration. We shot the film over the course of two years as well. Wow. Why did it take so long? Um, I didn't think it was going to take that long. Um, it was just sort of a new process for us. Um, it took us a long time to get started. I think, I think we, we, over, we over-researched it. We, we tried to come up with too much of a backstory, and we, mm. we um, just didn't know how to start. Uh-huh. Uh, funnily enough, the, the first scene we shot um, was Dara jumping out of the plane. Uh, so we just needed to plunge into it. But we didn't, re- yeah, it took us a while because we, we felt like we had to learn from the character that we would um, shoot a scene, um, edit it, talk about it, and then shoot again. Um, and we would shoot in really live locations. Dara volunteered at the daycare for a while. And yeah, things like that really helped um, the character come to life because we were, we were interested in a, a complex portrait of someone that... Uh, you know, we wanted, uh, we didn't want easy answers. And mm. um, so we were searching for something. And I think it took us, you know, we needed to live with the, the character in the film for a while to sort of get to those moments. Okay. So tell me about, um, you know, basically, she's, she's, she's works at a daycare. So daycare, yeah. er, early child employees. Tell me about them being maybe perhaps overworked. What, what's working conditions like for these people in Toronto? Well, the main inspiration for this daycare is the daycare sort of uh, features in the film. It's a daycare that my mom has run for 40 years. Uh, she just retired this year. Wow. Uh, I went to that daycare as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, and a big turning point for me was going back to that daycare as an adult. And some of the teachers that worked there, um, that looked after me as a kid, still worked there. And it was sort of the, my memories of them as a child and then seeing them as an adult and um, all those complexities. Um, but yeah, no, it's a high stress job. I think, I think the teachers that work there love children, but you know, it's a lot of kids and a lot of, uh, people working there at this daycare in particular, 200 children go there. So Jeez. it's, um, yeah, it's an intense environment, um, where I'll, there's a lot of, um, stresses. And then it's also just, um, I think what, what I really gravitated towards too, is just, it has an interesting place to sort of talk about, uh, society. And, um, you know, the trust that we put into people who look after children, but then also the, the mental health of those people and, um, yeah, how we sort of organize ourselves and how we sort of navigate these situations. All right. So tell me about how you first met Derek Campbell and tell, tell us about the relationship you have with her. Uh, I met Dara at a movie screening. Uh, I think we were both at a Michael Snow screening um, of Wavelength in Toronto. And uh, so, yeah, I think we both really love movies uh, and watching movies. We're both cinephiles. Uh, and Dara's also a filmmaker in her own right, and she's worked with a lot of other really interesting directors. So I sort of knew of Dara before she moved to Toronto, that she'd acted in quite a few really cool movies um, that came out in the sort of indie scene of New York. Um, so when she moved to Toronto, it was sort of, yeah, exciting to have an actress of her caliber um, who, who wanted to start working in um, in Toronto with local directors. Very interesting. Explain the challenges and rewards of making movies in Toronto. The challenges and rewards. um, I really just think of the rewards, you know. Uh, I feel really lucky to be able to make movies in a place where I grew up. Um, I've lived in Toronto my whole life. And, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I, I like 
you know, more and more. There are challenges, I suppose. You know, it's hard to find locations. It's hard to, but they've they've become assets. So yeah, it's hard to find a location. So I I, I gravitate to one I know. I gravitate to the daycare, and then when we shoot there, there's just there's so much for me creatively. You know, I have all these these memories and all these instincts of where to put the camera, all these tones and atmospheres that I know. So, yeah, it, it's similar, too, with working with with friends or casting people I know. Um, on one level, yeah, you have to be strategic, but at the other, the payoff for that has become, you know, a real asset and brings um, a real richness to the project. These sort of, you know, these sort of life details that you can't write, that there's so much packed into it that, um, you know, you kind of steer your camera towards it and then it um you know kind of explodes all these sort of the depths of meaning and sort of yeah memories of a place okay so you said you're a lifelong resident of toronto so tiff yeah. is, is a huge deal obviously you know for 10 days tiff uh, toronto is a different city so i would love to hear about your history with the festival uh as well as yeah. what it was like in 2019 to have your own film there yeah i mean yeah, I studied film in Toronto as well. I studied at Ryerson, and I wanted to study at Ryerson because I wanted to be close to the festival. But it's always been this sort of beacon of sort of film culture in Canada, of this way of sort of, you know, the world, you know, the festival in particular, the, you know, the world, the world cinematheque, the world, you know, the international discourse being brought to Toronto for a week, you know, has been incredibly influential just to be exposed uh, to those sort of films. Um, so yeah, and I've had, I have, I guess I'm kind of a veteran of the festival. I think I've had eight films play there, uh, Whoa. five of them shorts, and this will be my third feature playing there. But this time felt different. This time they put us on a, when we were in the platform section, and it felt like quite a different platform, quite a level up. You know, um, you know, a thousand people in the audience and Cameron Bailey introducing the film. Wow. And yeah, no, it was incredible. Um, and we just recently got back from Berlin, yes. uh, where we had a similar experience, uh, you know, uh, six sold out screenings in Berlin. So it seems Whoa. like it was the right place to launch our film that it sort of started us on this trajectory that seems to keep building. That's pretty cool. And Cameron Bailey was in Berlin too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw him walking around. Uh, so oh, were you also in Berlin? Yes, I was. This is, this, that's okay. where I saw the film. This was my first time doing Berlin, so I, I wanted to, to transition to that. Did you enjoy your time at the Berlin Alley? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it was amazing. It was great being there with the team. Um, yeah, just great, you know, the Q&As. It's one of those festivals, it's like TIFF, and I think it's kind of unique where it's like a, a festival of that size, but that it's open to the public. Mm-hmm. It's and like Toronto, play in yeah. different theaters that have so much history. Oh, my um, God. Yeah, it's a great cra- crash course and sort of, you know, understanding a city and visiting different neighborhoods and uh, sharing a work. One thing for me I'll, I'll share with you is um, I found the conversations you hear at the press screenings were really different than in Toronto. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah, you, you'd hear these guys from the Mediterranean talk about which which business or whatever is owned by the mafia or the Gomorrah or just or, <laughs> or people are falling asleep and, like, texting during the movies. It was just, like... A, a, a different vibe, different like different vibe, yeah. different vibe. And, and, and I appreciated it. I, I like both of them, uh, both yeah. experiences a lot, but they are different. They are, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, what would you like to see happen uh, positively within the Canadian film industry? Well, well, you talk about how you leveled up at TIFF. How how does the Canadian film industry level up a little bit? Yeah, I, th- I think it's a good time to be a filmmaker in Canada. Like, I feel like things are are changing. I feel like, um, you know, filmmaking is always changing and always evolving. And I feel like Canada is getting better or better equipped to evolve with it. Um, mm. It just feels like uh, different funding schemes, uh, Telefilm and the Arts Council are becoming increasingly jury-based which I think just adds like a level of checks and balances because I think, you know, Canada is such a big country and people come from all over, um, you know, and it, it's, I think, allowing for more unique voices, more, you know, autonomous voices in different regions um, for, yeah, for people to make films and then them travel around the world. Um, you know, uh, I just feel like, yeah, there's the, the difference between now and 10 years ago seems, seems huge. Yeah, there were some very interesting films at um, 
TIFF 2019, such as Blood Quantum and yeah. the 20th Century, that really show... Yeah, 20th uh, Century is amazing. Yeah, and yeah. even just uh, this year, the CSA Awards. Um, right. We're up for Best Picture, and I feel like we're in really good company. Damn. That's that's fantastic. Good for you, man. So, were there directors of uh, or or just movies in general, maybe not certain f- filmographies that you drew inspiration from while making this movie? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I grew up watching movies, so yeah, mm-hmm. I was a cinephile before a filmmaker. So, Ooh. yeah, tons of influences. Um, in particular, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think an obvious. I mean, the one that comes up most often, and it's true, is it would be Cassavetes. <clears throat> And the Dardem brothers, and a certain type of um, realism. I definitely um, got a cast of But then on top of that, there's Canadian influences too. Alan King has always been a huge uh, inspiration to me. Oh. Um, movies like Warndale and A Married Couple. Ooh. What are some Cassavetes movies that you like? Well, I think the obvious one is A Woman Under the Influence. But oh, yeah, yeah, no, all of his films. I mean, he's mm-hmm. one of those directors where everything, um, you know, especially in that pocket. But yeah, um, yeah A Woman Under the Influence, uh, Minya Moskowitz, Husbands, uh, Opening Night. Yeah, there's, there's, there's flickers of that throughout the film, mm-hmm. for sure. There's, I definitely think of him a lot. And also just the way in which he, um, you know, disorients the audience. Disorientation was a big part of the film of, you know, trying to find a complex uh, portrayal of a character that, was, that wasn't easy to peg down, that, that, that wouldn't lead to a simple reading, um, that the audience always has to sort of adjust and, and rethink what's going on in each situation. Well, I definitely did that, and it is a very strong film, and I want to congratulate you for all your success, And but, but b- b- besides all the accolades, just making a good movie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, that's really nice of you to say. Uh, you're, you're most welcome. So, Kazik, thank you very much for your time, and I was wondering, before okay. I let you go, what do you have planned for the future? I am writing a new film, uh, which, and I'm writing it again for Dara and also uh, Matt Johnson, uh, that's sort of the two main actors in the film. So I'm hoping right. to work with them again uh, and hoping to shoot soon. Okay, well, we'll stay tuned to that. Thank you very much. Okay.